Lovely to see you all this morning. Bless you. It's great. And you know, as family, it's so important we uh, stick together and pray for those. And I know AJ's asked us just to pray for um, one of the neighbours, uh, someone close to, to where AJ and Lisa live. Uh, a guy called Will, he's, uh, sorry, Daz, and his son Will um, has had a fit. And, uh, and AJ said as a church family, we pray. We pray for him. He's a, he's a boxer, isn't he, mate? Um, and uh, he's had this fit and kind of does is obviously understandably all over the place so can we just pray for the family is that all right um it's about connecting so we're praying for will lord we we bring this family to you we bring Daz to you we bring will especially to you at this time father we pray that through these horrendous times lord of fear and worry god that you will be so present in their lives lord we pray that through this they might recognize that there is a god that cares for them and we're praying for healing and uh, complete wholeness to return to Will's body, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We've got to believe that God can do the miraculous. That's the, the subject we're talking about, isn't it? And we have been. And um, this morning I'll carry on with our current series, When Pigs Fly. And uh, Simon kicked us off a few weeks ago and talked about the, the miracle of deliverance. A great subject, a, a challenging subject to tackle. Did a great job. And it sounded like I missed a great morning last week. Mary interviewed Dave LaRue. And you heard some great stories of testimonies about healing, uh, miracles of healing, and some, some amazing uh, stories just to, to take away. And uh, as Simon mentioned, it's amazing what you can find on Google if you're putting pigs fly on Google. There you go. Um, but as Simon mentioned, uh, on the first week of this series, when pigs fly refers to something that is highly unlikely to ever happen. Example of use? The Albion will win the Premier League. Yes, when pigs fly. Or maybe this one. Um, you hear your son say, I will wake up early tomorrow to clean my room. Yes, when pigs fly. Well, this week, the theme is when pigs fly, the miracle of provision. The miracle of provision. And this morning, we'll be exploring some examples found in the Bible of God's miraculous provision. Here's some amazing stories of how God has provided for people in need, as well as some personal stories I've witnessed and had the privilege to be a part of. God doing the impossible, the miraculous, his provision, where there seemed to be no way forward or no logical explanation. Throughout the Bible, we see miraculous moments of God's immediate provision. He provided manna and quail for the Israelites in the wilderness. And we read about that in Exodus 16. For Elijah, he uses ravens to deliver bread and meat and later supplies da a daily meal and oil. We find that in 1 Kings. He provides wine for the wedding at Cana, one of my favourites. We find that in John 2. And then he multiplies loaves and fishes amongst Jesus' disciples to feed a crowd of thousands. You know, we need to believe that God still does do the miraculous. It isn't just set for Bible times that God is still wanting to do the miraculous today. These are all amazing miracles of God's provision, but let's not miss other ways that God provides for us. And a quote from the eloquent Lindsey Grant. We were sitting in the car and I was talking about the theme. And she said this, and I thought it was so good, so it had to go on a PowerPoint slide. The miraculous does not always mean the millions. And it's right, isn't it? It doesn't always mean the big wow that actually God can do the miraculous in the small things too. Sometimes God decides to bless us abundantly. And we need to remember that being blessed abundantly doesn't always mean in great quantity. So I'll say that again. Being blessed abundantly doesn't always mean in great quantity. Sometimes God will provide just what we need for that day, for that season. And we, need, we see an example of this in, in Exodus 16. And uh, we read about the Israelites. God has rescued them from the Egyptians. But we read that they started to moan. They were hungry. And they said, if only we'd died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you've brought us out into this desert to starve. In verse 4 we read, the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I would test them to see whether they follow my instructions. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. 
And in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against him. And God did as he promised. In verse 15, when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is this? They didn't know what it was that God had provided. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. And this is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. Everyone gathered as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, no one is to keep it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses and they kept part of it until the morning. But it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. It's amazing, isn't it? We often think, I need to keep a little of this back because I can't trust God for tomorrow. So I just need to hold a bit of back of today's blessing. And God is saying, I'll always provide for you. As mentioned earlier, sometimes God decides to bless us abundantly. But sometimes God will provide just what we need for that day, for that season. And no more. Why? Because it teaches us to rely on him daily. It could be so easy for us to become complacent and not dependent on God for all we need. God wants us to trust him in all things and with all things. There's an amazing guy called uh, George Muller. I'm going to share a story. And uh, Doesn't he look like a lovely, friendly old man? I think he looks nice. He reminds me of, uh, looks a bit like Abraham Lincoln, doesn't he? Or the guy who invited Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, invented. But um, this guy was an incredible man of God. And as you can see, it was a long time ago. But George Muller was a, a Christian evangelist and the director of the Ashley Down Orphanage in Bristol. He cared for over 10,000 orphanages, sorry, orphans during his time and provided educational opportunities for the orphans to the point that he was even accused by some of raising the poor above their natural station in British life. Isn't that terrible? No, he, he sought out those that were most in need because he knew God loves them. He established 117 schools which offered Christian education to more than 120,000 children. Wow, what an incredible legacy. George Muller was an amazing man of faith and prayer. He saw and experienced the miracle of God's provision. I'm going to read you one of the stories. One morning, Muller awoke to the news that the orphanage, which housed 300 children, had no food. Muller instructed the house mother to seat all the children in the dining room, and he thanked God for the food. And they waited for God to provide. That's incredible faith, isn't it? Sitting all those children in front of the meal table with no food, trusting God for him to provide. And he did. Within minutes, a baker knocked at the door. Mr. Muller, he confessed, last night I could not sleep. Somehow I knew that you would need bread this morning. I got up and baked three batches for you. I will bring it in. The next knock revealed a, a milkman whose cart had broken down in front of the orphanage. The milk would spoil by the time the cart was fixed. The milkman explained, so would the children like some free milk? Incredible. As the orphanages grew, God provided heat, medicine, warm clothes, and also more bread for over 100,000 children. One could say George Muller had a landline to heaven. Amazing story, isn't it? Amazing story of faith, but an amazing story of God's provision. Miraculous provision. Whilst Muller's life may seem extraordinary, the same God who showed up every day at Muller's door invites us to boldly go to him with our daily needs. As most of you are aware, me, Lindsay and Ed, and we've got Lisa, who we are very amazed to have Lisa with us for so many years at Crunch, and they owe me to um, all work for Crunch, or did work for Crunch, a charity that mentors and supports children and young people, and we're going for 25 years this year. Quick plug, if you want to know more about what we do, the, our impact report is available online, and you can view it on Facebook. But we have a rock that sits on the lawn in front of Crunch, the Bethel Hub, and it has this scripture on it. Here we go. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And this rock is a, a constant reminder, and that scripture, of God's provision and faithfulness. We decided to get it in 2013, after we'd seen God miraculously provide for us as a charity financially. 
You know, there is a, a biblical precedent for laying stones as a memorial to the Lord in order to remember the good things he's done for us. The Hebrew word for rock indicates stability and faithfulness. In Joshua 4, 1, sorry, in Joshua 4, verses 1 to 8, we read how God provides a way for the Israelites where there seemed to be no way. They needed to cross the Jordan River, which was swollen, treacherous. Its banks were overflowing with the snow melt from Mount Hermon. And as soon as the priests waded in with the Ark of the Covenant, the water stopped flowing and piled in a heap. Twenty miles north, near the village of Adam, it was also cut off to the south. And while the priests waited with the ark in the middle of the river, the entire nation crossed over on dry ground. Joshua then leads the 12 tribes to remove boulders from the riverbed, which they placed in the promised land in a place called Gilgal. These 12 stones of Jordan were a memorial to God's love and miraculous assistance. And interestingly, when we went to go and buy this rock in 2013, it actually weighs 12 stones. Um, and we bought the, the one as it symbolizes that great Bible story of God providing a way where there seems to be no way. And every year in July, as a team, we gather around our stone and thank God for its, his ongoing provision and faithfulness. Because every year, finance is always tight, but God has always provided for us through contracts, grants, donations, and sometimes just pieces of work that just come out of the blue. It might sound a bit weird gathering around a stone. There's nothing magical about it. I'm not going to pull a sword out of it or anything like that. But there is a biblical precedent for laying stones as a memorial to the Lord in order to remember the good things he's done for us, his provision. I know Lisa has seen this many times. But um, Crunchy's financial journey, uh, sorry, financial year starts in July. It's when I started the charity 25 years ago. So it's a bit of a weird time for a financial year start. But uh, 2019 was forecasted to be a particularly challenging year for us at Crunch. Huge deficits, challenging bank balances, so much so we were at risk of closing. And I uh, thought I'd give you a bit of a, an insight. There we go. This was our forecast, July 2018, of what the financial year would look like for us. Not good reading. Just to those that don't know basic uh, accountancy, the, the blue line should be above the red line. Um, so that was our bank balance. That wasn't just profit and loss. So uh, quite a challenging time. And um, I remember at this time I felt it was right. We, I turned my office into a prayer room and we all took it in turns praying and uh, writing scriptures and things that God had said to us. And uh, we had many words during that time just about holding, holding the line, trusting God. And, uh, you know, we prayed and we said, Lord, we, we can't do anything. We've just got to trust you. I often think that when we seek God and we pray, faith moves the heart of God. That when we say, Lord, we, all we can do is trust you. There's nothing else. We can't fix this. We can do our bit. But ultimately, God, the, the future is, is down to you. And God was so evidently present during this time. Money would land in the account, sometimes days before payday. But we always had enough to pay the salaries of the 12 members of staff at that time. In July 2018, we submitted three funding applications. And as I said, we have to do our part. We have to be proactive, like the children of Israel. Almost be step forward, and then God does the rest. And before we sent these applications in, we prayed over them. We said, God, will they stand out? Will they be different? Will you give us favor? And... Uh, the first indication was very, quite a quick turnaround. And I had a phone call from the, the police inspector. And uh, she said, you know, you're, I've just seen your application because they've been inundated. And her words were, it stands out. has been quite unique. I thought, thank you, Lord. That's what we prayed for. And uh, she said, can I come and, come and see the work that you do? I thought, this is quite unusual. We've never had anyone come out to, to, to kind of do a visit before. Um, when we've applied for funding and she came and don't forget opening the door to this police inspector and she came in and said can I meet with the staff I said okay so that happened to be a few staff around or the Lisa you were around at the time there's a few people that were around and um, 
I kind of said, oh, I thought, oh no, I can't even take it to my office because it's this random prayer room with all kinds of things going on in it. That would really freak her out. So um, she spoke to the staff and then she just turned to me quietly in the dining room and she said, I'm a Christian and I'm going to give you all of the money you need. And it was like, wow, okay. And at that point, I knew that was the start of what God was going to do was something quite, quite amazing for us. And it was amazing to see how God provided for us over that year and he continues to do that now. It often felt, it did feel like the Israelites, Israelites did facing the River Jordan. There seemed no way forward and then God did the miraculous. He made a way where there seemed to be no way. And then this is what the, the year ended up looking like. A bit of a difference. And uh, I love God's eye to detail. If you have a look at the lowest point where we were forecast to be the lowest, that ended up being the highest income we had. Even God just does the amazing in that. And I just love it. And uh, a, visual, a visual, but an actual time where we saw God provide for us incredibly. And we trust him always for continued provision. God continues to do the miraculous and provides the finances we need. But it's still scary. But it's so important to look back and remember his provision and tell others. Hence why we had that stone. In Joshua 4, 21 to 22, we read that Joshua explains to the people that in the future, your children will ask, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, this is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. At Crunch, when people ask what the stones are for, we say it's a reminder of God's ongoing faithfulness and provision. God longs for us to proclaim his goodness to future generations. It's great. But you know, the miracle of provision is not just about money, food, possessions, God's miracle of provision can be time. People that God brings into our lives at just the right time or season. We can also get to play a part in being somebody else's provision at their time of need. As some of you are aware I was a part of a small community of Christians at Sandwell Christian Centre, now the Bethel Hub. And uh, I was asked by Elim to start something new from scratch alongside a few others. And Naomi was, uh, was one of those. And... Uh, we used the opportunity to do something a bit different. A Sunday was more like a small group, discussion-based, and always involved food. We wanted to bless our locality, so we did litter picks, afternoons in the park, and for about three to four years, we invited the local community to a Christmas meal that we provided, and Ed cooked it most years. On one occasion, we decided to do a random acts of kindness day on Langley High Street, and we had a pot of money and decided to give it away. Our uh, accounts were a bit more flexible in those days. And uh, we were able to do something a bit more creative. So we had this pot of money. It was about 500 quid, I think. And we went down to Langley High Street a few days or the week before. And we gave some money to the supermarket and said, when people come to buy their food, just tell them it's been paid for and that they're loved. We gave some money to the hairdresser and said, just for the first few people that come in, they're the hairdresser. Just don't tell them until afterwards, but their hair could, they haven't got to pay anything. It's been covered. They're loved. We gave some money behind the Crosswells bar. Some people had a few beers for free. And we went into the cafe, left some money behind the counter there so people could have a few hot sandwiches for free. And we didn't want people to know where the provision came from, just that they were loved. And we told the shops and traders to say, can you just say that they're loved? Loved by God and loved by us. The only thing we did do publicly was to give out bunches of flowers to random people on the high street. I don't know, Naomi, if you were one of those. But I'll never forget the one person who received a bouquet of flowers, and she was an elderly lady. And she found out, we found out afterwards that she'd lost her husband. And she said through tears that it would have been their wedding anniversary that day. And her husband used to always buy her flowers. The miracle of provision, the right place, the right time, a loving God. Are we willing to be part of God's miraculous provision for someone else? I'm going to tell you a story that I've told a number of times as the stories I've just told. But like Joshua said, it's important to keep telling the stories, the miracle stories of God. I was at a villa, villa game many years ago and um, this man came to sit by me. And uh, he was visibly anxious. He was shaking. And uh, I said to him, are you okay? And he, he said to me, it's the first time... He'd been to a villa game since his son had died. And he'd given up his season ticket because it was too painful. 
And uh, he was worried who had been sitting by, worried about how he'd cope. And I just said to him, oh, I'm, I'm a minister. I'll be, I'm here for you. And I'll pray for you. And uh, I'm always here to support. And he, he really appreciated that. And we had a good chat. And he felt comforted by the fact that I was there. And he said, out of all of these people, 40,000 people, well, it wasn't that many because we were in the championship at the time. And we were a pretty poor football team at that point. But he, he, said, he said, out of all of these people, thousands of people, that, how come I've got to sit next to you? A minister, someone who understands and can be there for me. And uh, I said I'd be praying for him. Two years later, uh, another story. I was uh, on holiday in Tenerife with Lindsay's mum and dad. And uh, me and Joe, my son, was, we were walking around in Villa Tops looking right thugs around Tenerife. And uh, we were, we'd just found this pub to watch the game um, that was on. And uh, we'd found this pub. Uh, anyway, this guy, while we were wandering around waiting for the game to start, this guy came up to me and said, um, where are you, you going to watch the, are you watching the game? Where are you watching it? And I said, we found this pub. I met him there. And um, we got talking. And he told me his story and he said, I would uh, originally was coming on holiday with my wife, but we've split up. It's been a horrendous time. And uh, we'd already paid for the holiday, so I've decided I'm coming on my own, even though I just, it's horrible. It's a horrible time for me. And um, he told me he was struggling, but he needed to be around people. And then he asked me, what, what, what do you do for a job, profession? And I always love it when that happens, because it provides a, a great opportunity. And I said, well, I'm a minister. And he looked at me, and it suddenly dawned on us both. He said, you were the guy who sat by me at the Villa game after my son had died. And you chatted to me and comforted me. And now we've come back into contact with one another. How come when I've faced the two most traumatic times in my life, I've come into contact with you? And I said, well, that's easy. It's because God cares about you and he wants you to know that. Amazing. And I was still gobsmacked, still gobsmacked by that story. Um, I was just as surprised as he was, if I'm totally honest. You know, coincidence? I don't think so. The miracle of provision? Yes. You know, God wants to give good gifts to his children. He wants to, to surprise us like me and that guy. He wants to provide us in many way, provide for us in many ways, through many ways. And as we've heard, he wants to give us good gifts today. He wants to provide for us. Great scripture, words of Jesus. He wants to give good, good gifts to his children today. He wants to give, give, can't get me words out. He wants to give good gifts to each one of you here. For those in our local communities, he's longing to provide. He's longing to be their provider in so many ways. This isn't just about finance. It's much wider than that. But you know, God only wants to provide for us with things that are helpful. Like you wouldn't give a child a chainsaw to play with. God knows what we really need and what would bring harm or an unnecessary distraction. God wants to give us good things. Good things. And uh, we often think we'd, there's lots of things we'd maybe want in life. I love this great quote. God may not give us everything we think we want, but he always gives us what he knows we need. There can be a difference, can't there? A big difference. But you know, the greatest miracle of provision that God could give to us is himself. He gave us everything. For God so loved the world that... Oh dear. <laughs> we'll try it again for God so loved the world that yeah you know before my dad died he said God could perform, perform a miracle and heal me but I have already received the greatest miracle of all time I've been born again I have new life in him death is not the end spiritual rebirth is not just a concept it's a miraculous transformation that each of us experience when we repent and accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, a miraculous event occurs. Our sins are forgiven and we're reconciled with God. Psalm 103.12 reminds us, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. This forgiveness is a gift beyond measure. Being born again doesn't end with forgiveness. It marks the beginning of a new life. What a great gift. The old has passed away, the new has come. We're transformed, empowered by the Holy Spirit and given a purpose in God's kingdom. 
And I hope that this morning has built maybe your faith a little bit through stories, whether it be a biblical story, a story of someone who set up an orphanage or uh, someone who stumbled into running a charity. <laughs> but God knows all of our needs today. You know, we need to trust him. Ask God. We need to ask God for more and to trust God for more. Great quote from Corrie Ten Boone. Faith sees the invisible, believes the unbelievable and receives the impossible. I want you to think on just these few questions as we end. Have there been times in your life that God has provided for you in a, for you in a miraculous way? But do you need to remind yourself of his goodness and thank him? Do you need to get a stone? Something that is a constant reminder. You know, when the, the weather's bleak and when life's tough and you come into walk, you come into work, walk past the grass and you see the stone, it's a constant reminder. God, you've, you've provided and you'll continue to provide. Maybe you need to get a small stone, a big stone. Get a massive, huge stone. Whatever works for you. If God has done something for you today, something miraculous provided for you in whatever way, shape or form, maybe you need to get yourself a reminder. We've talked about provision in its widest sense today and the, the miracle of provision is not just about money, food and possessions. God's miracle of provision can be time, people that God brings into our lives at just the right time or season. Can we pray for you today that God would make a way where there seems to be no way? Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Or maybe you need to receive the greatest miracle of all time. God's provision of himself, forgiveness and new life. There is an opportunity for that too today, if you've never done that. Before we pray, I, I had a, an image, a, a picture as I was coming, uh, coming here this morning. I have to go past Langley Green train station with the, rail, the barriers um, that you, go, you drive, drive over. Well, we, not through the barriers, but when the barriers are up. And, uh, but it did, God, I felt really clearly today, God said that maybe there's someone here that you've been stopped. The barriers come down and you're, you're frustrated. And God said the barriers come down for a reason, because I want to protect you. I want to protect you from some stuff that would not be good for you, would not be helpful. But of course, if you've ever been stuck behind, especially the one at Langley Green, you can be there for ages and it can be really frustrating. But you know, God is saying, it's there for a reason. Allow me to sort my time out and to do things in my time. So just a word, I'll throw that out, different to what I've been talking about today. But I want to encourage you to stand if you're able to, um, please. And I just want to pray. Please stand if you're able to. And I, I want to just pray for you today. And, and I don't know whether this is helpful or not. But like I talked about the children of Israel facing the River Jordan, and that challenge of, of needing to make a step. And you hear it all the times in, in the Bible where God almost needs action from us before he steps out with us. Does that make sense? And that's been my experience. Until we make a step, so often God waits for us to make our step of faith. And I, I, I want to, maybe for you today, I don't know what, what you need from God, what your provision is. What's the miracle of provision you need to see? whether it's finance, whether it's resources, whether it's time, whether it's people, whether it's a breakthrough, whether it's a change, whatever it might be, I want to pray and say, Lord, we're, we're praying for some miraculous provision to take place that God will provide for each one of us today as we step out. And I, as I pray, I want, I want to, whether you, you can just literally do a step forward or if you can't do a sidestep, Look like line dancing, um, but just as a, as a bit of a, a bit of a practical thing, whatever that looks like for you, whether it's just putting your arm out, your hand out, whatever it might be. But I just want to pray that we might see stories, hear stories of God's provision, of what He's done, the miraculous take place in our lives. Is that all right? Let me pray. God, we thank you today that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And Lord, we trust you. We trust you with the unknown. We give you our fears. We give you our worries. We give you everything, Lord, today because we need you. 
So Lord, we, we ask that you will give us the faith to see the invisible, believe the imp- unbelievable, and receive the impossible. Father, we're praying for your provision, your provision today, your miraculous provision to come into every situation, into every circumstance. Whatever people are standing for today or reaching out for you, Lord, we pray for a breakthrough. So we step out. We step out. Let's do it, guys, if you want to do that. We step into you, Lord. We step into the unknown, but we step out, believing God that as we step, you step with us, Lord. You step with us. So, Lord, we're asking for miracles to take place this week, this month, this year, in your timing, that we might know that you have provided for us. Amen.